just a one minute ride to Liverpool Street Station and here it is, the Bangladesh come Pakistan quarter of London, right here in London's East End. The colony has changed hands three times in the last century. The Jews preceded these Asians and in turn the Jews took over from the poverty stricken cockneys of the Victorian age. The needs of the people are met by their own kind, just establishing themselves one level above their customers. Gone is the Yiddish baker and the kosher butcher. Here is the Indian grocer and the Asian dressmaker. It's Kosov to Patel here in Brick Lane. Right in the middle of this conglomeration of patched up, converted and bodged buildings, some idiot has built this mirrored creation on a spot where reflection is needed least. Nevertheless, it is the centre of big business, be it the least attractive side, for in so many of these neglected brickments are stored goods that may well see the light of day from the store windows of Bond Street and Knightsbridge. There's even greater sadness at the north end of Brick Lane and then to the left. But if this shelter keeps a family together, they are not the worst off around Brick Lane. The West Indians too are a accommodated 200 yards away where bombs once fell and where street names do not always comply with the environment. It is also where the faded jubilee bunting has given way to the washing line to give the only colour to the dismal scene. The dismal scene is not improved by those who choose to add coals to the smouldering embers of racial hatred. It's not always safe to be around and it's asking for trouble to hang about where strangers are eyed with warranted suspicion. It would be wrong to say that nothing is being done, for it is and it has been for some time, but truly not soon enough and certainly not quick enough. One wonders whether the Bengalese will yet move on to Brighton and Hove and who knows move in before the bulldozer finally completes its job. On the other side of Commercial Street stands what was once London's premier flower market, Spitalfields. Today it's Buds and blooms are replaced by cabbages and swedes that will sell with ripe fruit from the Kentish orchards and the many distant tropical lands. By ten in the morning all the business has been completed. It was four hours earlier and now nearly all the Cockney porters have gone home. A few remain to clear up the late loading and prepare the market for the afternoon's influx of produce.
Rubbish is a feature of the large market and the large market attracts the worst. Not only the rats but the human scavengers and like seagulls around a fishing port they congregate to sort out what has been discarded and where it goes from there is anybody's guess. If a lonely child on a balcony or a mother sorting over rotten fruit is not enough, then London's East End has even more to offer. It's not the throwaway produce of Spitalfields that attracts the lost souls, it's the fuel provided by the wooden crates that makes this a haven for people who just don't fit in. The winter is not here yet, but when it is, these men and the occasional woman will spend much of their time around a fire provided by the timber of Tasmania that once protected a Granny Smith apple. With Brick Lane to the east and Middlesex Street to the west, it's Commercial Street that forms the artery through, and it was this borough that produced the Victorians with their most formidable slayer. Throughout history, there have been girls prying around the local drinking houses. Girls like Mary Ann Nichols and Martha Turner. Unlike these unfortunate ones, most survived to do something else when they were no longer attractive enough to lure the men. Others, more sexy, have always taken their place. Annie Chapman was a victim and it was perhaps symbolic that today on the spot where her body was scientifically dismembered stands a well-known brewery. Her living was centred around Isle. Her monument commemorates just that. Leading off Commercial Street, the other side from Brick Lane is the East Enders' own market. The market where smoked Scottish salmon is displayed in rows and the Jewish baker sells his crusty bread to a never-ending queue. The locals come here to buy all the week while the rest leave it till Sunday and they pay more.
the Cockney Barrow Boys of Wentworth Street, like the Porters of Spitalfields Market, are a very special breed. They hold a sense of humour and wit, envied by many and matched by none. It's the kind of business where son follows dad, who himself followed granddad, and so on. The stallholder will gladly sell his goods to all, be it the Asian of Brick Lane, the West Indian in the prefab, or the white man from the flats. They're all his customers, and they all live just one minute from Liverpool Street Station.